Hey everybody, welcome back to Gideon Stuff. Today we have a well, an interesting one. <laughs> We're taking a look at the CJRB Hyperlite. Uh, this is probably going to be a fairly long review. Um, I went back and forth on this knife a lot, and uh, I did take quite a bit of footage with it, so we'll see what happens. But yeah, very interesting knife. Before we get started, I gotta say thank you to Mike over at Sharpen Blade for sending this to the channel for me to take a look at. It will be going back to him when I am done. Alrighty, let's go ahead and start off with our blade length measurements. We're coming in here four and a quarter inches if we measure all the way back to the handle. And we're not gonna measure the sharpened edge because I made a modification to that. We'll talk about that later. Um, Let's go ahead and, you know what, we'll do our regular size comparisons. There's the wrap one. And the dose. There we go. Uh, let's go ahead and get our flagship comparisons out here. There's a PM2. And the bug out. So what we can see here is... I mean, we can't really line them up pivot to pivot, so I guess we'll line them up butt to butt. Um, pretty, actually pretty small uh, fixed blade. Um, let's go ahead and give a little thickness there. Pretty thin. Uh, you know what, we're going to skip the Civivis for today, and let's go ahead and compare it against a couple of other fixed blades. Uh, here is my favorite fixed blade. This is my Cold Steel. SRK, which isn't really going to fit into screen here, <laughs> and uh, we'll compare against this little knives wrench uh, knife I have right now. I really wish I had the uh, Bradford Guardian still to compare against it, um, and even though I don't have this knife, I did I was able to get a picture of this a couple pictures of this knife compared to the CJRB Silex. So we'll throw those on screen right about now. Um, what are we looking at in terms of materials? AR RPM9 blade it is a drop point with a pretty cool fuller, 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 and G10 scales. And yeah, that's about it. Uh, let's pull out the sheath. Kydat. Kydax, man guys, I cannot speak today. Kydax has this little attachment here, and then it also comes with like a little string. Um, yeah, this knife is designed by Joe Flowers. A lot of you guys might know he does a lot of stuff with Condor. He's kind of a bushcraft guy. So yeah, I was really excited to take a look at this knife and um, what do I think? Got a lot of thoughts about it. So let's go ahead and just get to those. Hey guys, so this is my first day carrying the CGRB Hyperlite uh, fixed blade. Um, pretty cool. What I want to talk about real quick though was the, uh, the carry of the knife itself. So Let's go ahead and get into that. I've got my phone like wedged in a tree here. So I can move it down to like crotch level. There we go. Okay, so this is how I'm carrying it right now on my utility belt. Working some fence right now. I've got my utility belt with all my other tools and stuff. Um, but earlier today, I was doing some irrigating and I had the hyperlight I was using it as my irrigation knife. So I was using it to cut the irrigation tarp, the uh, rope we were using. Pretty tight Kydex sheath. Um, give you guys something to look at besides my belly. Um, and it worked really, really well. And at that time, I wasn't wearing my utility belt. So um, I've been kind of experimenting with, you know, how I want to wear this if I'm, you know, wearing the, the work belt. But um, let's talk about the sheath itself. Kydex. And unlike the Silax, this one comes with a belt attachment, which is really cool. It's this little J-clip. Not usually my favorite thing, but this one has been doing okay today. So, I'm going to stick that there. 
for a second, take that off. The fixed blade I usually carry at work is my uh, Cold Steel SRK, much bigger knife and um, a survival knife. It's not, it, it's a work knife slash survival knife for me. This is not what I would consider to be a survival knife at all. So um, basically if I'm carrying this one, this is kind of just like a uh, pocket knife replacement for me. So I was thinking about all the different ways to carry this. You know, you've got your little J clip there. So slip it on the belt and that works pretty well. Uh, you can also, I don't have the proper uh, tools with me right now, but you can switch this around for scout carry, things like that. In fact, I think I'd probably like to carry this like this. Um, my biggest complaint with the sheath so far is that there's not a good place to uh, push off when you're taking a knife out. As you can see, you just have kind of the sharp part. And uh, the Kydex is on there good. And so, you know, I want something to grip onto to pull it out. But, um, yeah, it carries really well. I'm, I much prefer this setup to just the, the string carry they gave us on the uh, Silax. But... Yeah, just wanted to talk about that a little bit. Enjoying this knife a lot so far today. This is this video is probably going to be included in the review. I was thinking about doing like a um, what I did with the uh, Cold Steel Engage, where I gave a uh, like a full initial thoughts. But with this one, I just want to talk about the carry a little bit and just kind of give some initial thoughts on this knife right off the bat. And so far, I'm liking it. Um, I'm not sure it really fits into what I do out here in the woods, but it's a good little EDC fixed blade for sure. So props there. And now I better get back to work, but look at that view. And I'm going to try and get off this rock before it starts to lightning. And whoa, I am out of screen. That's not going to work. Okay, let's sit on the stump. Hey guys, day two with the CJRB Hyperlite out here at work. Let's go ahead and show off some, some views here, huh? Putting the fence down now instead of setting it up because we're getting close to the fall season. This is actually my last week at work before I go back to school. Crazy. Um, anyways. I want to go ahead and take the Hyperlite and do a little bit of woodworking with it. And maybe you guys will be able to see this. Let's just make, this is not really a straight piece of wood. And also most of the wood in here is wet, which isn't really great for testing a, a knife. But um, I did manage to find this piece that is not soaked. And so we'll try and make just a regular tent stake out of it. And yes, a lot of you guys may notice that I'm wearing the same clothes as yesterday. Um, I don't care. The only thing out here to judge me are the wildlife. And uh, they can be pretty judgmental, actually. Especially the marmots. This is biting in good. This is a little piece of... Engelman. You know, I'll tell a marmot story right now that I think is kind of funny while I whittle this wood just to kind of fill dead space. Um, let's go ahead and take that off. So, I don't know how common this is, but here in northern New Mexico, a lot of people refer to marmots as whistle pigs. And uh, so, here at the ranch that I work at, which a lot of people have asked me, yes, my family owns a cattle ranch. No, that's not the one I work for in the summers. Um, but here at the ranch I work at, there are some marmots that we're very familiar with. They live around the barn where we keep a lot of our supplies and stuff. And they are pretty friendly. They'll come out and they'll say hi to us. We, we know them. We have names for them. But there's this one who has this odd habit 
of liking to watch people urinate. So, of course, out here in the woods, you know, a bunch of us men working, when we got to use the bathroom, we usually go behind the barn and we, you know, do our business there. And uh, one time, the first time I noticed it, I was back there and I was taking a whiz and this marmot, whose name I'm not going to say for legal reasons, he jumps up on the fence post there and he just sits there and watches me. A little bit weird. And then the other guy started noticing it and that, that's just his thing. He just does that. So, okay, whatever. It's a marmot. So last year, there was a uh, some people who wanted to put up hay on the branch. They wanted to come in here and they wanted to cut the hay and bale it and stuff. I was like, okay. So the bo the boss man he said, you know, we're sending these these guys are coming out here to you know look at the the hay meadows and see what they think. Okay, awesome. So they come. And it's a father-son operation. So the son and the father both come out. Really, really nice guys. And so the son goes out with a couple of the guys to look at the hay meadows. And then I'm left kind of behind at the, at the barn with the, the dad. And he, uh, you know, we're talking, we're visiting. And we see one of the marmots run out of the barn. He goes running off. And uh, the the dad, he old guy, he couldn't really see too well. E, what, what was that? I said, oh, that's a that's a marmot. Por qué? So a whistle pig. Oh, okay, cool, cool. It's like, yeah, they you know they live in the barn where you know they're kind of our pets or you know just kind of joking around. And uh, so we keep talking, and then a little, well, little while later, he turns to me and he says, so uh. Where's a guy go to take a leak? So you well, <laughs> take your pick, you know. We usually go behind the barn. Oh, wait, no, wait, no, gracias, gracias. So he goes back there, and you know I'm kind of standing out there awkwardly by myself, like okay, whatever. And pretty soon <laughs> I hear, "E man, your weasel pig, he's watching me peace." <laughs> and oh, that was the funniest thing. Uh. He comes out and he's like, what's the matter with that thing? But, yes. Okay, almost got this tent stake finished up. Sorry you guys couldn't really see a whole lot of that, but there's our little notch, there's our steak. It does good with wood, actually. It does real good. Alright, back to work. So all in all, great blade shape for woodworking. Cuts really, really well. Good flat grind. Really does work. Ouch. I had a bug bite me in my, uh, my tackle nipple hole. <laughs> I ruined this video. My lapel mic may not work, but my lapel knife is flawless. Hey guys, it's early morning editing Gideon. Um, editing the CGRB Hyperlight video, I realize there's a couple, of, there's like some, uh, I guess, missing context uh, for a couple of things. So when I first started using the Hyperlite, um, I was enjoying it. I was like, you know what? Okay, I can see how this is a good knife. But the more I used it at like work, the more I kind of started to dislike it. Like not just like I, I was actually disliking it. And I realized that um, it wasn't necessarily the most nimble wood woodworking tool. I once thought it was. So I'm showing you guys all these clips uh, in the chronological order that I took them in. So uh, now we're going to jump forward in time a little bit. I'm going to show you the review cutting I took 
And then we're going to jump forward in time a little bit more um, to after I was using the knife in not really an outdoor environment, but more of a EDC type situation. So you're about to hear me sounding kind of negative and whiny. And just keep in mind that this was me being disappointed that the knife was not functioning as an outdoor knife at work, like I kind of wanted it to. It's not necessarily a, uh, you'll see my, my attitude change. My attitude towards this knife changes several times in this video, so get back to it. All right, so how does the CJRB Hyperlite work as an, uh, as an outdoor knife? Well, let's grab a piece of wood and let's go to town on it. Oh look, wood. Okay. So we're not gonna do anything crazy because this is a small fixed blade. Uh, but let's do a little bit of, let's do a little bit of whittling. Woo. Nice hard wood here. We're gonna find a different piece of wood. I've got an idea for something. All right, we're gonna take some of these little uh, cottonwood saplings instead of the cottonwood wood. Ugh! Caught you guys. See, I'll never let you fall. You can trust me. Mm. See, I would like my outdoor fixed blade to at least be able to handle you know, choppy some saplings like this, but I, I can't really get a grip on this knife. So, instead we're gonna try and cut it out. <laughs> oh man, that was... Torturous. Okay, let's go ahead and sit down here. Ugh. Let's just get to work a little. Keep that in frame so you guys can see, hopefully. Okay, so that jimping is grabbing my thumb, but back here instead of right there, like I want my thumb to grab mostly in the pad of my thumb, but where I want to hold the knife is here and it's only grabbing the back of my thumb. So, not a huge fan of that. It does, I mean it does cut, into wood pretty good. Um, I was gonna make a little fishing pole, but this thing is a lot shorter than I thought it was, so we'll just do some just random whittling cuts on here. I just feel like I can't get enough leverage out of the dang thing. I guess we're making another tent stake. You know what? Let's um let's just try to do some different whittling shapes.
I don't know, it's... I don't know. See, I, I feel like this, this, the blade shape works better for a bigger knife. Like, I don't know why, I'm having a little bit of trouble controlling this blade in such a small package. I love the blade shape. I really do, but uh, for some reason I'm just having trouble with it here. Yeah. Okay, so I'm trying to make just a, you know, I'm just doing some random whittling stuff, and I don't know, it's just... Not my favorite whittler. But, let's go do some more EDC stuff with it. Oh, I missed. Alrighty, let's talk about the CJRB Hyperlite. As you can see, I have been trying to use this knife a lot. Um, let's start off with the ergonomics. Or actually, let's talk about the materials. G10 and AR RPM9. Great combo. like it. Um, let's start off with the ergos. Mr. Joe Flowers, I love you, man. And you can take that as platonically or romantically as you want. I'm okay either way with it. But these ergos just ain't it for me. Um, it's thin. The handle is small for me. I don't like this little thing back here. The, the corner of the knife right here digs into my palm. The jimping's not really in the right spot. <sighs> They're just not really for me. For, like harder cuts even just holding it it's a little bit uncomfortable but like for just you know take it out make a light duty cut and put it back in the sheath it's okay but um i don't like the ergos at all and uh just just the way it is unfortunately okay so <laughs> this is gonna be a sad review guys uh let's go ahead and talk about the sheath kydex how's a carry it's a small knife it's very unobtrusive um, I don't usually like these J-hook type things, but you know what? It's okay here. I'm not gonna... It, it actually worked all right, and I definitely am glad they included this instead of just the the rope, uh, like they did with the Silax, because this is too big for a neck knife. One of my viewers told me with the Silax that with that rope, was that was for um, you wrap around your belt and you tuck the knife into your waistband and pull it out like that, which is cool. I prefer belt attachments. You can position this a couple different ways. I'd probably carry the Scout, but it's starting to rain. I should probably go take care of my computer and stuff. Let's get through this real quick. So, whoops, let's cut some stuff. Double wall cardboard. Not a problem. This knife blazes right through that cardboard. Mwah! Beautiful. All right, let's do a rope pull. All right, pretty good. That might have been my fault that I slipped. Let's do some pushes. One, ooh, two, ooh, three. Very, very nice pushes. Love to see that. Call that there. And let's get our pool noodle out. Ooh. Okay, so it did okay. That big oopsie right there was because we hit that un that ugly part of the blade back here. But otherwise it did it did okay. It did just fine. Alright, let's get this cleaned up, sharpened up, reviewed, and sent over to Sharpen Blade. It really is gorgeous over here. Look at that.
beautiful morning hike. Absolutely gorgeous. So what I kind of want to talk about right now is get out of that sheath, boy. CGRB Hyperlite. Um, there's going to be a lot of videos like this uh, in the review for this knife. Um, because I've been changing my mind back and forth about the Hyperlite a lot. Whether I like it or don't like it. What I like about it, what I don't like about it. And, uh, I guess overall, <laughs> uh, it's hard to think with all this beauty around here, but this is just about the only time I have to film right now. So, I've been using the Hyperlite a lot. I've been carrying it as an EDC fixed blade, wearing it just like this. I've been using it everywhere carrying it everywhere. And the Hyperlite's a good name for it. It really does just disappear in the pocket. It's easy to carry, unobtrusive, or I mean it doesn't disappear in the pocket. It disappears on the belt. Um, I wish there was a couple more options for the sheath carry. And the sheath itself is sometimes a little too tight, but other than that, it's, it's all right. So, using it at work, as my work fixed blade uh, this summer, really was not the best application for it. However, now that I'm back at school and stuff, uh, I'm finding I'm liking it a little bit more. Not quite as an outdoor survival fixed blade, but as just an EDC fixed blade. And... If I'm being honest, it's still just kind of a pocket knife replacement, but as a tool, I've been enjoying it. I'll continue this a little more when we get to the top of the hill. It's beautiful up here. It's a very green desert right now. So, CGRB Hyperlite. As some of you may know, I have been homeless <laughs> for a little bit. And don't, don't worry, it's not like a huge deal. I still have a job. I've been camping, living on my truck, living with friends. Um, just a uh, clerical error uh, left, me, left me homeless for a little bit. Hopefully we'll get that worked out soon. Oh, sorry, I've got a finger. And so while I've been living like this, um, this has become one of my closest companions. I do still stand by the fact that this is not an outdoors knife in any way. It's just not. However, as an EDC fixed blade, it works just fine. I should have brought my stand up here, but I didn't. Oh, look at these gorgeous rocks. Um. This knife has kind of reaffirmed my love for AR RPM 9. This knife has gotten wet, rained on, and it's been fine with the stainlessness. It's been holding a good edge. It's been decently tough. I've been, you know, putting it through some things that I, I guess I wouldn't typically do, and it's been holding up really, really well. So that's good. I'm really happy about that. The ergonomics, yeah, I still don't really like them in terms of, you know, hard pushes. But there are some things I appreciate, like this little scallop right here. Get your thumb in there like that, get it in kind of a pinch grip. This is good for a lot of tasks right like that. The jimping here, I wish it came out a little bit further, but it's all right. The blade itself performs excellently. It's very slicey. It's not a super thick knife, but as you can see there, the tip is pretty strong. So I don't really worry about that which is awesome. And it's just really solidly built. I'm not sure exactly what tone the review of this knife is going to take yet, because there are some things that I really don't like. The edge termination is one of them. 
I, I, the ergos are kind of working, but I do wish the knife was a little bit more comfortable. I wish it was a little bit bigger. I think that would be cool. But it is a good knife. It's a really good knife. I've already done the cutting, the cut test footage. Well, not cut test, but the review cutting footage. And, um... Yeah, my mind's been changing a little bit. I can see there's a roll on the edge right there. I do need to sharpen it up and stuff before I send it back to Mike, but... So far, it's impressed me a little more than it originally did. And look, there's some more of that gorgeous, gorgeous country without my ugly face. So this is interesting. Holy crap. I saw people having to push their cars out of the water because it was so deep. Yeah. Let's see if they need any help. Well, if there's one thing I've gotten good at over the past couple of months, it's uh, helping people through flooding. Holy crap. See, I did have somewhere I was trying to get today. <laughs> but uh, I guess that's what I get for making plans, huh? Man, it's rained like crazy. Ah, yeah, look at that. That street is a river. Try not to show off anyone's license plates. I came through here just like an hour ago. I'm going to get away from the side so I don't get splashed, but holy crap. Woo. Well, now my feet are wet, and I left my windows open. Ah. It really is something else. All of the uh, like like sewer sewers here in the city are like overflowing. Like a little ways back, I just saw like this geyser of poop. Uh, I was knee deep in that water, helping push that car out, and. Smells like it. Ooh. Gotta say, this is kind of crazy. I'll try and maneuver around, get places where, you know, like just over here, I, there's some, some cars that were stuck in the mud and, or the water and people are pushing them out and stuff. And I'm like, well, okay. Where am I? I'm supposed to, I'm trying to get somewhere. Um, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with these videos. I might throw them in somewhere random in a video. Maybe the CGRB Hyperlight video, since I'm carrying that right now, as we speak. But, um, yeah, just... Oh, and yes, enjoy my, uh, all my belongings here in the back seat. But, um, yeah. It smells disgusting, I have to change my pants. Okay, so let's get into what I'm liking and not liking about the CGRB Hyperlite. Like I said, I went back and forth on this knife a lot, whether I liked it or didn't like it. You know, really just trying to make up my mind about it. And you guys know, with my channel, I carry a knife until I feel like I know enough about it to review it. Sometimes that only takes a couple of days. Sometimes, like in the case of this knife, it takes a while, and I go back and forth, um, but I think now I finally have a, uh, I finally have a good idea about what I what I think of it. So let's go ahead and start. Uh, first off, I love the looks. I think it's a very very good looking fixed blade. Love the fuller here, um, classic elegant drop point shape. Really really like that. So, 
Yay, good job. Uh, next thing, I like that with the sheath, they included this attachment. Uh, we'll get back to that. Um, when I reviewed the Silex, uh, it just came with the, the string for like neck style carry. Uh, was not a big fan of that. And actually I had a, a, a viewer comment and tell me that it wasn't for neck carry, it was for uh, basically you put the knife in your waistband and you wrap that line around your belt or something and then, yeah. Um, which I tested a, a little bit and yeah, that kind of works, but I just wasn't a big fan of it. So I like that they included belt attachments and yeah, we'll get back to that. Um, the, the sheath itself, let's talk about that. It's a pretty good Kydex sheath, taco style. One thing to keep in mind with Kydex sheaths, put the knife in there, pull it out and, uh, it didn't do it that, that time, <laughs> of course, but Kydex sheaths will actually dull your edge. Yeah, see, there's a little bit of Kydex. Um, just because your edge slides in along this plastic stuff and it kind of cuts it and we can see here that I have a Nice beautiful edge on here um, But yeah, just keep that in mind with Kydex um, Speaking of that edge uh, air rpm 9 steel love it This is quickly becoming one of my favorite not just budget steels, but one of my favorite steels in general It's a great steel this knife got rained on due to an unfortunate night while I was homeless, which, yes, that, if, you, if you didn't know, I was homeless for a little bit just because of some paperwork errors. Got that figured out now. Got a place to live. Good. But um, got rained on and it was wet. I used to cut fruit and vegetables and all kinds of stuff and it never had any problem with rust. Um, so very good and stainless, held its edge very well, sharpens beautifully. I love sharpening AR RPM 9. It's very easy to sharpen and it takes, I mean, you can put a polished edge or a coarse edge on it and it, it just does very, very well. I like that a lot. Uh, decently tough for a stainless steel I've found, um, and in a fixed blade, that's, that's good. So yeah, I really do like the, the AR RPM 9. The G10 here is also very nice. I like the texturing it has. It's kind of smooth, but it does have a little bit of gription. Um, I like this little scalloped area here. You can like kind of pinch grip the knife like that. The jimping is done pretty well. I like the texture on that. So there we go. And the blade itself performs really well for your slicing tasks. Um, I enjoyed that a lot. Um, the ergonomics are okay. We will talk about the ergonomics more, but um, just for kind of light duty stuff, the ergonomics are fine. Alrighty. There we go. There, There's what I like. <laughs> Let's kind of sum it up. Um, oh, and the knife is easy to carry. I guess that's, that's another thing to say. It is pretty lightweight since it's called the Hyperlite. Uh, the satin finish is good. Um, fit and finish all around just feels pretty nice. The scales and the um, tang of the blade line up pretty good. Everything's like softened well. The scales are slightly contoured. I like all that. So good fit and finish. Uh, it cuts very well. Like the materials a lot. Like the looks. Um, yeah, good stuff. Let's go ahead and get into what I... Uh, what I don't like so much. And the first thing, the biggest issue with this knife was the edge termination. I have since altered that. I went in and modified this for Mike. Um, I don't know if that video is gonna come out before or after. You know what, I'm a big boy. I'm in charge of my own scheduling. I'll make sure that video comes out before this review so you can see the process that went to that. But yeah, the edge termination was terrible. It just basically ran to the back here, had this big smile, uh, did not like it at all. When I went to sharpen this knife, I just kept running into that and it was just frustrating me. So I put in a sharpening choil. So there we go. Problem fixed, but that was a pretty huge issue. Next thing, the ergonomics. I do wish the jimping came out a little bit further. That's something I complain about a lot. You guys know me. I don't feel like jimping is always placed exactly where it should be. Like back here, it works. The jimping, the texture is good. And I, co I could hold the knife like this. But like my natural instinct is to hold the knife right here. And as you can see, I'm kind of missing the jimping 
And uh, yeah, some people don't really care that much about jimping. I do. Um, but moving on to some more serious issues with the ergonomics. This handle is a little bit too small for me, and I don't have big hands. But you can see when I'm holding it right here, how this corner is just kind of digging in there. That was not comfortable at all. Um, if I was doing hard cuts, like when I was using this at work and I was going for some hard cuts through wood or through some thick rope, I felt that. Um, if I was wearing gloves, I didn't feel that. But when I was wearing gloves, this knife was just way too thin for me to like keep a good grip on and it kept like twisting and stuff. So <sighs> it's very thin and that helps it to be compact and easy to carry, but it hurts the ergos in my opinion. Again, if you're just using this as like an EDC fixed blade, um, it probably won't bother you that much if you're just, you know, if you're not really bearing down on it. And it's comfortable enough just like this, um, but you know, I can kind of choke up and get myself away from there like that. And so it works a little bit better there if you're doing like whittling or something like that. But if you want me to choke back here, if you want to do some like powerful cuts like this, some pulling cuts like that, yeah, it did bother me. Next thing, I don't know what the heck this is. Um, I, I think you can take the scales off and this might serve as a lashing point if you want to do like a paracord wrap. I'm not sure. I tried looking it up and I didn't find anything really. So I'm not sure what this little dongle here is, but I kind of wish it wasn't. Next thing, this lanyard hole. Fixed blades, I think a lanyard hole is a lot more uh, useful than on a folder. What are you going to put through there? You can't get 550 cord through that. I can tell you that right now. It's a very tiny lanyard hole. Um, feels kind of kind of weird to me. Um, and then I got a couple of complaints with the sheath. Uh, and just the attachment it came with. So while I was carrying this knife, I decided I wanted to try and carry it scout carry. Uh, what size are those again? Let's go ahead and grab my... Uh, well, I guess I can show it without taking it apart right now. I want to carry it scout carrying, so I figured, you know, just flip this around. Well, you see how it's like that? So you can't just turn this and then carry it scout style. What you'd have to do is rotate this whole thing, and then you only have one, like, fixture point. And for me, it just didn't work out real great. Um, I think you can put other systems on here. But yeah, the J clip here, I didn't think I was gonna like it. It actually worked a lot better than I expected. Um, so yeah, you can actually throw that into the good. It worked better than I expected. Not my favorite thing, but it did work. So there we go. Um, and that's about all I can say with like outright complaints. So now let's go ahead and get into kind of discussion or let's get into the weeds so i first got this knife kind of towards the end of the work season out at the ranch you know before i came back to school and out in the woods while i was using this knife um i it, I, it, it wasn't really what i wanted uh, i would not call this a survival knife at all and so you know at work i carry my SRK a lot because uh, this knife not only do I use it for big tasks at work I also keep it around because I'm working in the woods if something goes wrong which it has in the past I want to have a survival knife with me you know we're miles and miles away from civilization so this did not fit that role at all and what I started noticing was this basically was just kind of taking the place of having a folding knife in my pocket so I was also testing this knife at the time and what I realized was if I was going to carry this knife to work, I would care, I'd have to carry this fixed blade and this fixed blade because this one was just kind of a pocket knife replacement. Um, I hope that makes sense. I hope you guys can kind of understand what I'm, what I'm saying there. And this knife worked good for several things. Um, Doing some irrigating, I was using this down there in the water, it's kind of the irrigation tarp, and yeah, this worked fine. Um, it cut really good, nice and stainless, I enjoyed it. For the bigger tasks, 
that I would use a fixed blade for though? Not really. <sighs> so at first I didn't really like this knife just because I wasn't finding a whole lot of utility for it. And then I became homeless and I had a bunch of my stuff uh, packed away in this big trunk and this was a knife that I kept out to use with me and I started enjoying it a lot more because I was using this as like my only knife and so I was using this to, you know, food prep. Any, basically any type of cutting I had to do, I did with this knife and I realized that, yeah, it's a really good tool. It's a great knife. So what are my final thoughts and opinions? Would I consider this to be a survival knife? No, absolutely not. Is this a good EDC knife? Yes. If you like to EDC fixed blades, I can definitely recommend this knife to you 100%. If you don't EDC fixed blades, I really don't think this knife has much of a place for you. Um, yeah, that's about, that's about all I can say. Do I like the knife? Yeah, yeah, I do. But I don't think it's for everyone. Um, if this knife were 20% larger in every dimension, a little bit thicker, a little bit longer, you know, girthier handle, I think I'd make an excellent outdoors knife. I love this blade shape. As it is right now, it's a little too small to be a survival outdoor knife, for me at least. Um, it really is kind of a pocket knife replacement. If you get, if you're tired of carrying pocket knives, you want EDC a fixed blade, this is a great way to go. So, I think that's about all I can say about this knife. Uh, oh, and the price, these go for about 50 bucks. I think that's really good. That's a great price for what you're getting. Excellent. But yeah, kind of a weird review because I like the knife, but I can't recommend it to everyone. So, it's up to you to make your decision. Thank you again to Mike for loading this in. And that's going to be it for today, guys. Like, comment, and subscribe. I've been Gideon. Adios.